It's not every day that somebody offers you a steam engine. Certainly not one that's pretty much ready to run right out of the gate. In the early days of preservation, the Talachlan Railway survived on goodwill and big favours. People asked friends, and they asked friends of friends, and eventually the society began to ask strangers, companies and businesses across the UK if they wanted to be involved with this pioneering endeavour. And they got some great responses. But only one of these was a steam engine. Number 1431 was built in 1918 by Andrew Barclay being the first of the production line of the company's light class. She spent her early life working at RAF Calshot with sister engine number 1432. RAF Calshot was a marine craft maintenance and training unit, and the engines were kept busy running supplies between there and the Eaglehurst camp a mile and a half away. Alongside their role hauling torpedoes from place to place, they had a little passenger train which was condemned after a particularly raucous night out. This proud heritage is why number six is currently in RAF Blue, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. The engines worked well here, running the short distances with their heavy trains with ease. By 1949, both engines, still in their prime, were put up for auction. Abelson's was an engineers and machinery merchant based in Birmingham. Whilst the company did not specialise in narrow gauge locomotives, they did dabble in the field. They bought both 1431 and 1432 to export them to India, for work in a copper mine. Unfortunately for Abelson's, the Indian Board of Trade refused to accept them, the mud hole doors not meeting Indian standards. Fortunately for us, this meant that there were two narrow gauge steam engines languishing in the yard when a letter came through from the fledgling Talachlin Railway Preservation Society. In October 1952, Abelson's offered 1431 to the railway as a gift, and it was. 1431 was in good mechanical condition, could easily be regaged, and was, of course, free. Catnip to the preservation pioneers. The story goes that the chairman of the company at the time had been unwilling to cut either engine up, but had just left on a trip to South Africa when the Talachlin's letter arrived. His co-directors saw an opportunity to clear some space in the yard, and requested that the engine be named Douglas after their absent chairman in order to soften the blow. Douglas was regaged and fitted out with the various Talachlan accoutrements at Tommy Hunt's Griffin Foundry. When she eventually arrived at the railway in 1954, now numbered six, she was ready to steam and pull trains. Thanks to the incredible generosity of all concerned, the cost of a new engine, ready to run, had been no more than £75, a little over £2,000 today, which isn't bad when you consider the cost of a 16 mil locomotive. Even before she had arrived, Douglas had changed the railway forever. Why? Her height. Douglas has a tall single-piece chimney, and a tall cab to match. This meant she wouldn't fit through the bridge at Cunful, and didn't fit in the south shed until it was rebuilt in 1961. Volunteers lowered the track bed under the bridge to ensure she would fit, and these changes have remained ever since. The track of those early preservation days was a major challenge to the preservationists, particularly with Douglas. Douglas has a short wheelbase, meaning she will rock and roll on bad track when running at speeds. Douglas's derailments became infamous, and volunteers soon perfected the art of re-railing their wayward engine, often managing the task within half an hour. In fairness, she was never designed to pull heavy trains at speed over long distances. Whilst some considered Douglas somewhat of a curate egg, circumstances bent she quickly became an important part of the operating fleet. With the Fletcher Jennings engines unreliable and Sir Hayden out of service, Douglas was a mainstay of the Talachlin through the 60s. In fact, for nearly 20 years, between 1954 and 1973, the shrill chime of number six could be heard across the Fadu Valley, running for an estimated 36,932 miles. In 1968, Douglas worked 36% of the mileage when compared to the other engines. She certainly earned her keep. It will be of little surprise that Douglas provided ample inspiration to Wilbert Audrey when he was writing about the Scar Lowy Railway in his railway series books. Through the character of Duncan, the challenges of working with number six were laid out clear to see. Tunnels were not a strong point, and neither is a bad bit of track which should probably be mended first thing tomorrow, 
But Douglas will pull anything, and does mean well, even if she is a little bouncy. There are some who'd say that number six is far from ideal for the Talithlin's purposes, but she is also probably the least modified since arrival. After all, if it ain't broke, why fix it? To many, she's the pride of the fleet. Since first arriving on the line nearly 70 years ago, Douglas has more than proven herself. Her roomy cab and shrill chime make her a favourite for many, and frankly, who doesn't like a bit of rock and roll? Now the hard and heavy days of the 60s are long since past, she has settled down to be a really useful engine indeed. Not that she ever wasn't, of course. 